Hey everyone, welcome to the video. I'm going to my cheat sheet for tomorrow's early MLB main slate for DraftKings. There is also a late main slate as well, and I'm going to be doing a cheat sheet for that too. Just going to have to be, give me a little bit of time because it does take a little bit of time to do uh, these cheat sheets. But anyway, before we continue, if you leave a like, subscribe to the channel, I really appreciate that. You can also follow me on Twitter at crispinl 16 And if you have access to this cheat sheet, the pitching model, hitting model, projections, daily write ups, Slack chat, me talking Slack chat literally all day. Uh, you can link, hit the link in the description below. And it'll take you to my Patreon. We got over 70 members now, so really appreciate it. appreciate all the support on there and all the uh, support on YouTube as well. You guys have been very awesome. Uh, been growing in a short amount of time, so it's bigger than I thought I'd get at this point for sure. So you guys have been doing awesome. Appreciate all the likes, subscriptions, and all that. But yeah, take you here and pick whatever sheet you want. NFL's coming out soon. Very excited for NFL. Just cannot wait. Uh, it'll be in September though. Don't sign up now because you'd be wasting your money. <laughs> then we have the all access for 20 bucks, which has actually been very popular. Because so if you look at all these, it's a pretty good price. And I just want to do a disclaimer. I am not a lineup seller for when it comes to MLB. Uh, Andrew likes to do his example lineups for UFC and PGA and whatnot. But I just put so much work in MLB. i not saying Andrew doesn't do a lot of work because he does, but um, I just myself, I just, all this uh, work in, it's to help you make your make your own lineups, I mean, I can't really uh, spell it out more than I can right now, making a cheat sheet, projections, and all that, so it's just to help you make your lineups, which I th think you should be able to do, because um, I give you all the resources to do that, because if uh, I'll give you an example of what you'd have for the cheat sheet, or if you sign up on Patreon on the sheet, so here's like the pitching sheet I got for each, uh, tab for hitters and then we have the pitchers as well so then we got this is the pitcher sheet so basically what hand the pitcher is the pitcher's overall stats splits versus lefties splits versus righties um vegas when that comes out and i do weigh the projections with vegas and whatnot then the opponent so with the overall opponent uh, matchup and then we got there's the opponent's splits versus lefties and righties and then we got park factors and all that good stuff and projections so that's what you get access to. I think it's a pretty good all-in-one database. I really don't think there's anything I'm missing on here, so you shouldn't have to go site by site. This is pretty much just an all-in-one hub, and then you can ask me questions all day in Slack chat as well. So I really enjoy it. It's what I use to help make my cheat sheets. So if you like the cheat sheets, I'm sure you just uh, like this, because sometimes I miss a guy, but if you see a guy on the sheet that you think is a pretty good play, all the numbers are lining up, hey, go for it. <laughs> so anyway, that's enough plugging. I got to do that because I get new viewers every uh, single video, so if they don't know about it, gotta do that so i apologize for those of you who have to listen to that every single video but you probably skip over it anyway so who am i, I don't know it doesn't matter all right so anyway let's get into the sheet um not a huge fan of the slate i will say i do like the late uh, later slate a lot better but i do have my plays i do like so justin verlander 12,100. i think he's the number one spend up he's the safest spend up in my opinion uh, he's got an extremely high strikeout rate above 30%. Just the only problem is he does give up a lot of power, and he is giving up. He's given up the most home runs in the league so far this season. Now that's not to say I'm too worried about it, because if he gives up a solo shot or two, he's still going to strike out like probably above 10 guys. So that's going to make it makes him extremely safe. The only problem is when there's multiple guys on base and he gives up a uh, home run or two. But I think he can have a very good game here versus Oakland. Garrett Cole, he's a very similar pitcher to Garrett Cole because Garrett Cole has a high strikeout rate, but he does give up some power. Cole had a fantastic game, so I think we can see more of the same out of Verlander here. So I do like him, but if you want to get a little bit different in GPPs, Mike Miner looks pretty interesting at 10400 earlier in the season. I liked him in the same exact spot. Obviously, he was a lot cheaper, though. But I said I liked him, and he's pretty low-owned, and he had a very good game versus Seattle. Seattle is uh, strikes out a ton versus left-handed pitching, and he's 2K cheaper than Verlander. So I do think this is a pretty good spot for minor, good strikeout upside matchup. Obviously not as safe as Verlander, but I think he's up there in terms of uh, ceiling. And then Vince Velasquez. So if I like uh, an expensive pitcher. We're going to have to pair him, pair him with a... Uh, low price pitcher and really there wasn't really any 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 sp2s in the mid-range that stood out to me so i was looking at the uh you know bottom of the barrel here and vince velasquez is really standing out at that price tag at 6200 i know he's not very good he does give up a lot of power but the one thing we like is his high strikeout rate and it's going against a detroit team who strikes out a ton versus right-handed pitching so this makes a lot of sense to me with pair with, pair with the guy like verlander verlander offers us a safe floor and you know just high upside and then vince velasquez 
while he offers us a lower floor, he has a higher ceiling as well. And that's the kind of guy I want to pair with Verlander. And it's really the only SP2 I had a lot of interest in. So I don't mind going with Vince's SP2. And he's going to allow us to do what we want with our bats if we're spending up for an ace. Which, you know, a lot of times we can't. So I think he unlocks the lineup really. And lets you get some good bats in. So my catcher, I like Chance Cisco, 4,500. He's murdering righties this season. He's got a 300 ISO versus them. And Clark is allowing a 300 ISO to lefties. So that makes a lot of sense to me. And then, but where, we're probably gonna, where I'm probably going to go in cash games, JT Real Muto at 3,900. The Phillies are going to be popular tomorrow versus Zimmerman in a bad bullpen, and they should be. I'm going to be playing them too, especially in cash. I just really like the price on JT here. Zimmerman does not strike out a lot of guys. He throws a lot of fast uh, fastballs uh, down the plate. So I think these guys can connect and score a lot of runs. I think this is the highest uh, Vegas over and under the slate. And, yeah, I think it's a great, great matchup for the Phillies. And then if we don't use those guys, just punt it, whoever gets into the lineup. I don't know who's going to make the lineup yet, so just whoever fits, whoever makes the lineup and is cheap, you can plug them in if you don't like those two guys. And then at first base, we got Reese Hoskins at 4,500. So just pretty much just what I said about JT, and Reese has always been very good versus right-handed pitching. This year he's been slightly better versus lefties, but he's still pretty good versus righties. And Zimmerman isn't good versus either side of the plate. He's worse versus lefties, but that doesn't mean he's good versus righties. He's still bad. Then Joey Votto, 3,900. Uh, for all the times I've played him this week, it seems, or last week, he finally homered tonight. I'm pretty sure he homered. I think that's what I saw on the app. But he's 3,900, and Chastain is giving up more power to righties, but he only has an 11% K rate to lefty bats, and Votto seems too cheap here, so I don't mind the Cincy lefties here. And then Christian Walker, 4,400. Uh, he's actually been better versus righties, but I don't want to use... Um, never mind. But he's been better versus righties. But John Means continues to defy logic as his ERA goes down and his XFIP goes up. His ERA is in the twos. His XFIP is now five. I think it's five four five, which is it's just so drastic. I mean, regression's got to come at some point unless he's just going to be lucky all season. I hope not. I've been stacking. I've I've been stacking against him um, occasionally, and it just it does not work. I don't understand what is going on. He is pretty good versus lefties, though. I will say that. So I do like the righties here, where his K rate. His K rate versus lefties is around 30%, but that drops quite a bit versus um, right-handed bats. And then at second base, we got Keston Hira. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but uh, it doesn't matter. I think he's in a good spot, 5300. It's a good reverse splits matchup here. Uh, he's been killing righties. He's got a 301 ISO himself versus right-handed pitching, and Sims is giving up a 286 ISO versus righties. Now that's a very small sample size. But that's just what I got from my uh, from fan graphs. So I can only uh, use what I got. So, but I would I don't mind the lefties as well as you're gonna see. I have Mike Moustakis right here, 4600. It's like I said small sample size, but Sims has been brutal to lefties. But I'm still gonna give the advantage to Brewers lefties versus Sims. So I don't mind the Brewers as a nice stack tomorrow. And then Scooter Jeanette, 3500. I hate playing him. You probably do too. And I think he was recently dropped to sixth in the batting order. Hopefully that gets bumped up a little bit, but even if even if so, I'm still a little bit interested because there's really no cheap second base options I liked unless one makes the lineup tomorrow. But if we need a cheap, cheap option, it's never fun rostering him, but it's a good matchup and he saves us some cash, so I don't mind it. Obviously not in love with it, but we got to save some salary somewhere. And then at third base, we got Eduardo Escobar, 5200. He's much better versus lefties, whereas ISO creeps up to near 330, and I do prefer the righties versus means, as I've talked about. Then Nolan Arenado, 4,300. He's just way too cheap in a matchup versus Fetty. Uh, got an email. Lost my spot. Yeah, versus Fetty, who can't strike out righties to save his life as his K rate sits at only 9% versus them. So I do think the righties are going to make contact. And, you know, Arenado is one of the best hitters in baseball. So don't mind that. And then A. Eugenio Suarez, 5,100. He's been hot and gets a nice matchup versus Chessine, who's allowing an ISO over 200 to righties, so that has come with a major increase in strikeout rate at 26%. But Suarez has been really hot, so I don't mind him, and uh, he does have good numbers versus righties as well. He's really good versus lefties, but uh, righties are... I don't mind him versus righties either. And then at shortstop, Trevor Story at 4,700. So like I said, with Arenado, the righties will be able to put the ball in play here in this matchup. A lot, and uh, Story's smashing righties this season. He's got a nice zone near 290 versus them, which is better numbers than Arenado. So, and Story's num uh, price came down, so I like these cores, not cores, I like these Rockies bats uh, versus Fatty. They're pretty cheap, and it does make for an interesting stack tomorrow. And then Jonathan Villar, 4,500. 
Really not much else here, but VR is in a decent spot here as a lefty versus Clark. And then Nick Ahmed at 3,800. Uh, decent numbers versus lefties with an ISO above 200 and a Woba near 400. And we want the righties versus mean. So uh, it's burned me a lot, but the D-back stack does look pretty interesting to me, especially if they can get to him early and get to that bullpen. And then in the high-end outfield, we got Ketel Marte, 5,200. Like Escobar, he's much better splits versus lefties without some outstanding numbers all around. They should feast on the nose bullpen if they can get two means early enough. And then Jordan Alvarez, 5,500. Really expensive, but Bassett is very solid versus righties, but lefties are another story. He's giving it up a nice out near 200 versus them, and the K rate comes down substantially. And Alvarez is smashing righties so far, and if you can afford him, he's in a great spot. Trey Mancini, 4,900. This is going to be pretty sneaky tomorrow, in my opinion. He's a re reverse splits righty versus a righty. Taylor Clark, who's giving up a 293 ISO to right-handed bats. So I do think this is a very good spot for Trey Mancini. And that Diamondbacks Orioles game could make a nice game stack. And then in the mid-range, we got Charlie Blackman, 4,800. It's weird seeing him around this price. And while Clark's K rate comes up to lefties, that comes with more... Not Clark. Sorry, I was getting confused. <laughs> Just talking about so many Diamondbacks. While Fetty's K rate comes up to lefties, that comes with more power. And Chuck Nasty is 5 for 5 versus him in his career. So, so some very good numbers versus him for those of you who like BVP. So I'm on Blackman. That Rocky stack looks pretty good. And then Michael Brantley at 4,600. What I said with Alvarez, but obviously with less power. Rule of law here. Rule of law here when he's he's on the sheet facing a righty in the 4K range. That's just how it goes here. And then Bryce Harper, 4,500. He's going to be really popular at this price. as lefty versus Zimmerman, and I'm all for it. I do have a do have him as core play status. So I like Harper a lot. And then in the value, I feel we got Kyle Schwarber at 4,200. Not a good ballpark, but BD is terrible versus lefties. With Schw and Schwarber is going to be leading off, so that makes a lot of sense there. Uh, Jesse Winker, 4,100. I assume he's going to be leading off versus Chessine. I was surprised he got bumped down to fifth in the order versus um, uh, Davies tonight, but... I do like the lefties here, so I really like him if he's leading off. And then David Dahl, 4,100. Uh, Rocky Stack versus Fetty. I like that. So I like Dahl. He's really cheap at 4,100. Then Adam Eaton at 3,800. Don't love the matchup versus Gray, but I do prefer the lefties here. So maybe Soto and Eaton and Adams could make a you know very, very sneaky GPP snack because I don't imagine people are going to be doing that. Then for the core plays, we got Verlander at 12,100. I think it's easy enough to afford him. We've got enough, we got enough value elsewhere to do it. Although I don't mind taking stabs at Mike Minor and GPPs. Then JT Riomuto at 3,900 at catcher. I really like that. And then Bryce Harper at 4,500 in the outfield. And then the top stacks for me are going to be the Phillies, the Brewers slash Reds game, and then the D backs and the Rockies. And this is from earlier. So. Just ignored that. Oh, don't even get me started on the Indians and Nats game. Like, oh, well, not the Nats game. That actually ended up popping off. I was mad at the Nats for a while. And then they finally started doing stuff, especially Trey Turner. But, man, the Indians absolutely blew it last night. I know you guys probably had a lot of Indians. They were very chalky and cash, so I guess it didn't hurt you that much. But, man, they blew it. <laughs> Aaron Sanchez, too. I don't understand. But, Anyway, that's all I got for the video. Remember to leave a like, subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate that. You can follow me on Twitter at ChrisPinnell16 if you want all access to all the extra goodies. Uh, hit the link in the description below. And I will see you guys soon for the next video. PGA is going to be out pretty soon. And i got to work on the late slate video as well. Alright, so best of luck and I'll see you in the next video.